Hi, welcome to another episode of MYD Global. I'm your host, Leanne hackman Carty. In today's episode, I'm speaking to a very visionary woman who has taken her entrepreneurial drive and applied it to solving social issues. Her name is Jody Steinhauer. Not only is she the CEO of the Bargains Group, but she's also started her own charity called Engage and Change. One of the projects they do under the charity is called Project Winter Survival. It's a great program and it's providing backpacks to homeless people. And it's giving them things like socks and toiletries and, and, and a backpack and sleeping bags and all kinds of essential items for free. So stay tuned as I talk about Jody and some of the great work she's doing across this country. Hi, Jody. How are you today? Great. How are you doing, Leanne? I'm good. So thanks for uh, talking to me today, a little bit about your program. And just before we get started, just tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Jody Steinhauer. I am situated in Toronto, Canada. Uh, I founded a national company called The Bargains Group 32 years ago, where we buy and sell discount clothing and basics. We started off selling to stores across Canada from small mom and pop stores all the way up to people like Winners and Giant Tiger. And for those of you who remember Bargain Heralds and Byway and Army Navy, places like that. Uh, we then graduated in helping homeless shelters because my passion um, was homelessness. And we found out that homeless shelters are in desperate need of things they don't get donated, the gaps. Uh, we then graduated to correctional facilities, um, promotional logoed products, um, gift programs, uh, founded a charity to help the homeless, and then kits for a cause. So we've been doing all of these things for over 30 years. That's wonderful. Well, the thing I wanted to talk to you about specifically today is, is your project Winter Survival. Can you talk a little bit about why you started that program? Sure, sure. Uh, many years ago, when I started helping homeless shelters, uh, and they were so ex excited that that we could help them instead of them going to a store and buying socks and underwear and winter clothing that they desperately need, if they don't get it donated, they found the bargains group and our prices were 80% less and we were a one-stop shop. But the more calls that we got and the more shelters that gave our name out, the more it broke my heart. Like, wow, like they need all of the, you know, they would call me and say, Hey, I'm in Calgary and I, I got your, your name. I'm with Calgary Alpha House and uh, we need like 500 pairs of gloves, but I only have 200 bucks. Can you help me? And it really, it broke my heart. I mean, we're in a rich country and I know a lot of people. So I thought, wow, how can I help this problem? So I just kind of organically back then reached out to a bunch of like-minded business people and said, there's something going on and I think we can really have a big impact uh, show up to my warehouse with a hundred bucks next Saturday, trust me. And that's all I said, right? So I had about 25, 30 people come to the warehouse. I invited a social worker from a Toronto shelter. And I said, you've got 15 minutes to tell these people what exactly is going on and what it's like to be homeless. And what are the struggles as social workers you have to try and help these people getting them out of the cycles of poverty. So she spent 15 minutes and by the end of it, they were like, you know, oh my God, they had no idea how bad it was. Um, and then right after that, we packed these kits and, and I strategically knew exactly what needed to go in to these outreach workers. What were they lacking? And we packed these kits and we put on some music and I fed them pizza and literally 45 minutes, right? We had this huge mound of kits at the end of it, huge pile. And everybody just felt like warm and fuzzy. And it was like, wow, that was like fun. Look what we did. And at the end of it, we told them that we're going to now drop them off at three shelters. And one of the guys called me the next day and said, I saw someone on the street the next morning with one of those kits. We have to do this again. And can I bring in my employees? And can I bring my family? And sure enough, throughout the day, they all called and said the same thing. So I thought, wow, this is great. It wasn't just me, like-minded people wanting to get together and, and do this. And these are not people that money was any object whatsoever. They could have just written a check, no problem. So we did it again. And we asked the question after the second winter event, 
what problems do people have on the streets when it's the summertime? Because, you know, 80 degrees, sun is shining. When it's cold out, you know, we all understand how challenging it, well, we don't really understand, but we can imagine how horrible it would be. But in the summertime, um, nobody thinks about homelessness being a problem. And we found out from the social workers that more people actually die in Canada on our streets of of, uh, dehydration in the summertime than they actually do of cold exposure. And that shocked me and that shocks most people. And I thought, okay, business leader hat on, easy problem, solve it. Who's got beverages? So we just put it out there to our network, found a whole bunch of beverage companies, Nestle Waters came forward and we did the summer project called Project Water, which is saving people from dying from dehydration. So there's these two projects that are saving lives. And we just finished Project Winter Survival on Saturday, even during COVID, which was 10 times the work because it was a whole other, you know, pivot just like everything else. But I couldn't sleep knowing that people would die without these kits. And we just packed half a million dollars worth of kits that were donated to over 200 shelters outreach and drop-ins within two hours of Toronto. And these are going to everywhere from the encampments um, to people who are sleeping outside because they just don't feel safe going into a shelter because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. And I love the fact that, I mean, wearing a business hat, you know how to solve problems. Yeah, I mean. People do every day. And so for, for you to be able to see an issue, to identify the problem and say, I have a solution. Right. And, you know, right. that's, that's fantastic. Not, um, not only am I a business person, I'm an entrepreneur, which means I've got crazy ways exactly. of solving problems. So, you know, when the board, my board came to me, which is a volunteer board, I mean, Project Winter Survival and Project Water are yeah. under the charity engage and change.org. And okay. we're all, there's five of us, we're a volunteer board of women. Uh, we all have careers. And when they said to me, we can't do it this year, because when we do the event, the third Saturday in January, every year, it's in the bargains group warehouse. Mm -hmm. We have hundreds of people shoulder to shoulder packing like one of those very long buffet tables you see on a cruise ship. And the bag starts at one end and it comes down the other end and everybody's having fun packing these kits. Hey, it's COVID. We couldn't do that. So the board said, we got it. We can't do it this year. And I might no, we can't do it the same way this year. But I'm not going to know that someone froze to death because they didn't get my kit. And that's what the social workers have told us. Without your kits, there would have been deaths. And so that's powerful. Tell me about what's in a kit. So what are those survival items that you're putting in a kit? I'll show you in just a second. Great. (laughs) So this year, this is the kit. Okay. So most importantly... It's a really strong, sturdy backpack with padded straps and adjustable mm-hmm. because a lot of people who are homeless only have what they can carry on their back. And then in it, what you don't see is the sleeping bag. There's a big sleeping bag with carry straps Great. so that they can put the sleeping bag right over their shoulders and stuff it back in if they're moving around. Okay. Those are the two pieces that are excuse me, gold on the streets. Then there's the obvious stuff. Like if you're outside and it was cold, what would you need? So there's two pairs of socks. There's a toque. There's a really super large warm scarf. Um, and then there's the all the obvious things, which are hygiene products. Toothbrush, toothpaste, lip balm, hand lotion, cleanser. And the most important thing this year, it's COVID. We've got a resealable pack of five masks, which I'm not sure if I can pull out right here, but there's five masks with a resealable pack. There is a amazing product, which we do. It's a spray sanitizer. So they can spray their belongings because in various parts of Canada right now, Toronto, we're in lockdown. If a homeless person wants to go wash their hands or go to the bathroom in a local coffee shop, guess what? They can't. They can't. So this is washing hands. And then we have other sanitizer. There's about 30, 30 30-ish products. There's a deck of cards to stimulate the mind because that's really important. And a stress ball to keep the circulation going. And something as simple as a pad and a pen, because if they've lost their potential phone or something, they can write down the next, hopefully, appointment with a social worker. So those are the, I mean, they're bare necessity. Oh, and hand warmers. 
lots of hand warmers too, hand warmers and foot warmers. That's awesome. I love the fact there's a sleeping bag. So do people donate these items or these are people give cash and then you go buy them? Yeah. So the, oh, and we also forgot really important things like nutritious snacks and water. Uh, yeah. So great question. So my company, the bargains group, you know, we have warehouses full of millions of dollars worth of products. So I donate what I can. I can't donate everything or I'll go broke. But I work with all my incredible suppliers and say, hey, I just bought, you know, 100,000 toques from you. Can you help my charity out and donate some? But they've got to be brand new. They've got to be, I, you know, we're very specific because dignity is a really, yeah. really important factor of this. So they've got to be for a man because unfortunately, most of the people living on the streets are men. Um, and can you help me out? So I usually ask for between six or 10,000 units. So it'll cover off both projects during a year. And I have amazing employer, like amazing suppliers who've come to the table. Also companies will come to me who quietly have things that they want to get rid of, but they don't want to end it up. So here's a great example. Um, a bank had these and the hockey tournament was over but it's a beautiful warm lined yeah. toque, right? A $40 toque. So they heard about me and called and said, we love your charity. Can you get rid of these for us, right? So quietly I'm able to, that's my, my kind of other job. I get rid of donations quietly. We had a call for masks from a big retailer did a private label program, right? They want us to get rid of all of these masks quietly. So a lot of the product is donated as much as we possibly can. We cannot accept anything that's used. Bed bugs is a real challenge. Yeah, yeah. So the two were, were, you know, we're volunteers. The most important items, that's why we have to raise money, are for the backpack and for the sleeping bag. But we buy them eight months in advance. Um, and we have like one donor who came up and heard about our project and said, I don't need my name on a hospital. How many hospitals need my name? I love what you do. How much do the sleeping bags cost? I'll look after those for you. So this is the kind of philanthropy that's happening. People want to see where every dollar is going. So we say for a $25 donation, you can help buy a kit. That's fantastic. I love your charity. Uh, well, it's, and gra it's grassroots as they come. I mean, when you talk about, like, I actually have had people come to us and say, are you sure those are your numbers? How do you do it for so cheap? But, but the truth is, it's because as a business person, I'm leveraging my relationships. Yeah. And in Toronto, there's a very famous store that closed recently called Honest Ed's. And Ed Mervish was mm -hmm. an incredible merchant, and, um, but he was a huge philanthropist and he was my mentor. And he said to me, Jody, you have a big pencil. You buy millions of dollars worth of product you have earned the right to ask for donations for your yeah. charity. And you can say with class to a supplier, I've got three people I can buy socks from, but you know, if, if I buy them from you, I'm going to expect you to help me out because we've all got to help out each other. Yeah. And, you know, my suppliers know I'm loyal, loyal, loyal. I've been in business for 32 years. If they help support me, I'm going to support them. It goes the same way with the bank. CIBC is our incredible lead sponsor. They've been my bank for 32 years, but they know the second they don't come forward and be my lead sponsor, I have no problem changing banks. <laughs> right. And, and I think that's okay to say that. Yeah. Like yeah. we have to support the people that support us. Right. Yeah. And then I just have wonderful people who say, I love what you do. I don't like writing checks to charities. I don't know where my money goes. I want to help you. So, yeah. well, so I will put a link in the video for people to go to your charity website. And so I assume they can go there and if they yeah, want to get involved. Donate. They, yeah, want, they to get want to get involved, involved reach out. Uh, they want to donate money. They want to create their own fundraiser. It's engageandchange.org. And if, you know, you know, people are always asking me, why are you only in Toronto? We did do it in Vancouver. The challenge is I have wonderful suppliers, but they can't donate everything across the whole country. So we had to figure out how can we take what we're doing and teach everybody how to do it, right? Yeah. So we have done that. We're really proud. We've we've ripped off. I'm, a, I'm a, an entrepreneur. So it's all about R&R, &R, ripping off and replicating. And I copied the best, which is myself, in my charity. And we created kitsforacause.com. 
and kits for a cause. We teach everybody from a, a family doing a birthday party or a Christmas a Christmas party to, you know, a conference of 10,000 people. And during COVID, virtual opportunities, how to volunteer with impact. So we've got all different models, but most importantly, people are wonderfully wanting to help. And that's what's great about COVID. There's some great stories out of COVID. And I will tell you more people than ever have come forward and asked us what we need, which is a really beautiful story because Canadians are giving people and we can't survive or get through this if we don't work together and roll up our sleeves and just help the, you know our fellow neighbor because nobody chooses to be homeless. And the unfortunate thing is with COVID on that other side of the dime is you look and you say how many more people are in need as a yeah. result and are, are at risk of becoming homeless. Yeah. Our, our shelters need. are sadly our shelters are rampant. I mean I hire homeless people to come work in my warehouse Last week, I hired five of them, but I said, you have to get a COVID test. All five of them were positive, right? And it's, it is what it is. I mean, they're in, an, in a community that's having a hard time keeping this. And um, part of it, which people don't understand too, is things like corrections. They're trying to get people out of the jails, yeah. back into the community, but COVID's rampant in the prisons. And if they're letting them out without testing them, they're just transferring it over. So if I were homeless right now, let me tell you, I'd be sleeping outside because I wouldn't want to put my body at risk being in a shelter yeah. and catching it, which is really, really a sad thing, but it is reality. So, you know, be kind. Um, you know, we all say wash your hands. I carry around cases of hand sanitizer in my car and give it out to homeless people, right? It's not something you would normally have think of what you're giving them, but that's what's keeping them alive, right? Um, and, it, and you're out there in Calgary, there's wonderful organizations that are out there. There's a guy named Chaz who runs street outreach program. Um, incredible. So we're helping all throughout, all throughout the country with the things that people are needing to, to stay alive. And, and anybody to get through what we're getting through, giving will make you feel good, right? And any way we can help, just please reach out and contact us. Well, Jody, thank you for the great work that you're doing, the vision you've had and uh, wishing you all the best uh, in, in serving this mission. Yeah, and stay healthy, Leanne. Stay healthy, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.